This week, learn how to smooth out the bumps in your time series data using moving averages and median filters. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, I'm going to show you how we can smooth out some variations in time series data using two very basic tools, the moving average and the median filter. So first, we need some time series data to play with. And again, we're going to turn to the Mesonet data. In this case, I've picked a case from January 11th, 2018, the Norman, Oklahoma station. This day presents a significant frontal passage, which is going to let us see a few interesting differences between these two types of filters. Now, there are, of course, many more advanced filters that you can use, and these are really some forms of low passing. But again, those are more advanced signal processing topics. And for just smoothing out some time series data, these work very well. To start out with, we're going to do our imports. So pandas, numpy, this is sort of my standard import stack for doing most analyses. Uh, I know that I'm probably going to use pandas for reading in data. I'm going to use numpy potentially for doing some manipulation. And then I'm going to use matplotlib for plotting. We don't want to forget our matplotlib inline magic. And then we'll go ahead and use read. CSV to read in our Mesonet data file. Notice I again used tab completion there. And as we covered in the video on reading Mesonet data, I'm going to specify any number of spaces being a suitable separator using that regular expression. I'm going to use the Python based parse engine. And this just prevents a warning from showing up. And I'm going to skip two rows. So if some of this is confusing to you, definitely go back and have a look at where we covered all the different features of read CSV with regard to parsing Mesonet data files. So if we look at the head of this data frame, it does look like we've parsed correctly. So we've got a station ID, a station name, a time, the station's every five minutes, and then all of our variables. We're going to look at T air. As I mentioned, this is a day with a frontal passage. So we want to see what that looks like. So let's just look at the raw data. So we're gonna look at DF of T air. It's pretty clear where this passage is, but notice all these little fine, uh, high frequency, we would say, variations on the data. Maybe I want to just exaggerate the, or not exaggerate, but just look at the, the frontal passage here. I don't care about all of these small time series variations. Uh, maybe I'm gonna make a simplified figure for teaching or for my poster or for a textbook, or I'm just not interested in that. I want to look at longer time scale phenomena. So you could code up a moving average, of course, uh, by making a, a loop and looping over each data point, but there's a much simpler way to do it, and that's using convolution. So this is going to do our moving average in the frequency domain, which is much, much faster. When we take a moving average in signal processing lingo, we would say that we're convolving what's called a boxcar with our data. And this is just a, a function that's all zeros except for some ones. Then it looks like a boxcar or it looks like a square wave. So we're going to make that function, convolve it with our data, and however many ones we have will be the length of our moving average. So to save myself some uh, changing numbers around for future experimentation, I'm going to create the variable filter length and set it to, let's say, five points. So this will be a five point moving average. 
So T air moving average. We're going to call np.convolve. We have our data. And we have our boxcar. To create the boxcar, I'm going to use numpy ones. I'm going to make a one dimensional array that has however many ones we have defined as our filter length. So this will be an array with five ones in it. And then I'm going to specify mode equals same. This just tells Convolve what we want to do with the ends where we don't have five data points or filter length data points. We'll see some artifacts, but this will keep the two arrays the same length and make it easier to plot them. If we look at the documentation for Convolve, you can see that there are valid and full. So you can go look at the documentation if you think either of those might suit your application better, though I generally use same and deal with the end effects myself. Now once we do this, this actually doesn't create the moving average quite yet. It sums up filter length points, so in this case five points, as we move along. So now we need to divide it. Remember an average is we add some number of things together and then we divide by whatever that number of things was. So T air moving average, we're going to divide it by the filter length. So this is the same as typing T air moving average equals T air moving average divided by filter length. Slash equals is just a, an operation and assignment in one operator and a little bit more concise to type. So now I'm gonna make our same plot. So we'll plot our raw data, and then we'll plot our T air moving average. So this does look roughly the same. We do see those end effects, but notice this peak is subdued. These little excursions, especially down here, you can see are significantly smoothed out. So let's keep turning up how much we smooth. So now I'm gonna smooth by 10 points. We see more attenuation there. Maybe I'm gonna smooth by 20 points. Okay, now I'm gonna start seeing some artifacts here. This is a nice smooth, sort of what you would draw with a pencil as a, a diurnal signal almost, except for this frontal passage. But if I keep cranking it up, we'll see an exaggerated case where the slope of this line is now totally different because we're taking the average of so many points, we're really smoothing out this sharp frontal passage here. And maybe we want to preserve that. We want to see the frontal passage, but not all of the little variations. So you could play a lot with this and filtering is playing a lot with filter parameters generally. And I would say this is probably an okay compromise. I've got rid of all of the little variations, but I'm just starting to affect the slope of my frontal passage. But we can do better. Moving averages are really great for time series that don't have these sharp, abrupt steps in them, but then they become difficult to tune to get the right performance. That's where something like a median filter comes in. The median filter will help preserve these sharp features, but give you the trend in general. And the scope of how a median filter does this or why it works is a little beyond what I want to talk about in this video, but it's a tool that you should keep in your tool belt. If you've got a more smoothly varying signal, moving average is probably just fine, and it's potentially going to be faster. Again, you have to do a, a time comparison on a subset of your data. But let's look at a median filter. So I'm going to import it from scipy.signal, import medfilt. tair medfilt is going to be equal to medfilt. And we look at the documentation, perform a median filter on an n dimensional array. And then we're, I'm going to go ahead and specify a kernel size. The default is three, but this is basically how many points uh, we are going to consider in this moving median effectively. 
it needs to be odd. It needs to be able to be centered on a given point. Notice our moving average didn't have that restriction. So let's give it our data, which is df tier and a window size. So up here, our filter length was 25. So let's just use that variable again here. And now let's create a plot. So again, I'm going to plot our raw data. I'm going to plot our moving average and the median filter. Okay, so now we can see the median filter is doing almost as good of a job as the average. So the median filter is green, average is orange. It's doing almost as good of a job at eliminating some of these variations, uh, likewise down here, but it is tracking almost precisely the frontal passage, whereas the moving average smooths that out. We also don't see significant end effects with this filter, which is pretty nice. So let's turn it up to something a little more extreme now. So I'm going to turn this up to a 51 point, rerun all of our cells, and now we see a more extreme example of the moving average really smoothing out that frontal passage, but the median filter preserving a lot of those rapid changes and just getting rid of some of the higher frequency noise. So I hope that you found this useful. It will help you filter and present your data in a nice, clean way for you to interpret or others to look at your data in or to just help pull out the things that you're interested in seeing and get rid of higher frequency information that you may not need. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.